Welcome to MIT Supply Chain Frontiers, where we discover the future of global supply chain education, research, and innovation. Brought to you by the MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics, every episode features center researchers and staff who welcome experts from the field for in-depth conversations about business, education, and beyond. Today, we're speaking with Fari Gaba, Research Associate with MIT CTL's Megacity Logistics Lab. My name is Fari, and I am currently a technology and policy program student at MIT. I work in uh, the Megacity Logistics Lab under Matthias Winkenbach, and we do a lot of work in, in last mile logistics, optimization, operations, routing, and, and planning. Recently, Matthias and I have been working a lot on drone delivery operations and what that means for last mile logistics going forward. Why do you think this is a, an important thing to know about? The last mile represents a disproportionately large share of the overall delivery supply chain cost. And so drone delivery, it seems to be a solution for logistics firm. We tackle drone delivery in two different ways. One is the pure play drone operational model where we have drones operating on their own. The other model is what we call a truck and drone cooperative model. And this model is really about drones that sit on top of standard delivery trucks. And they sort of go out into the city and do their work uh, in tandem and try and extract some efficiencies from doing work in parallel rather than a single driver doing single deliveries at a time. And so this second model is much more aircraft carrier-esque in its approach to last mile delivery. And we think that these two models are what the, the future of last mile drone delivery look like. With all of that said, Matthias and I are sort of realizing the value of understanding the broader social and economic and, and regulatory implications of drone delivery beyond what we work, typically work on, which is routing the drones to the customer between the, the depots. There are many technologies that we've seen that have almost been deployed prematurely. Societies are actually having to bear some of the negative externalities of these technologies. The most common uh, example of this technology policy conundrum is social media and its capacity to, to propel divisive news. And so there, there are many examples like this where we need to really think about the, the broader implications of new technologies. In the logistics space, firms are working on a variety of different technologies, even beyond uh, drones, to sort of meet the last mile problem head on. And we think that there is much value in understanding the, the whole system and, and painting a full picture of what this uh, technology would mean for our cities, for our lives, and, and for the citizens they're trying to serve. You recently published a working paper with Matthias and the Megacity Logistics Lab. What does it mean to have a working paper? A working paper sort of means something that we envision will be um, part of our future research going forward and something that we're still sort of ruminating over and trying to, um, trying to develop the, the concepts around. This paper sort of tries to address what this technology would mean for, for cities and societies if deployed at scale. And what should the stakeholders, be it the, the, the logistics firms, the, the regulatory bodies, citizens, municipalities, um, what should they be thinking when they talk about or when they hear truck and drone delivery? In the end, when a logistics firm or, or some people working in this space have to, have to route a drone from their delivery point to and from their, their depot, they won't be able to fly in a straight line. They'll have to probably avoid certain areas or, or have these sorts of considerations in mind. And that will have implications for their, their bottom line, um, their operations, and of course, for, for the impact they have on, on, on the communities they're serving. What are the biggest challenges that you're facing in researching a topic like this? Yeah, so that's, a, that's an interesting question. Well, let's, let's break it down to two things. I guess the first one is, let's understand what the challenges are for the technology specifically, and then we can talk about what are the challenges for researching such a technology. So the former, what are the, the challenges for the emerging technology, the truck and drone cooperative system, mainly regulatory uh, in, in scope and actually social in scope. So we found that the, the barriers to the truck and drone cooperative model are actually quite similar to that for typical pure play drone delivery in that the regulations are not really there to support these sort of operations at scale. Operational safety, integration into sort of the larger airspace some of the privacy implications of drones flying overhead and having active cameras, and actually some of the noise pollution and, and noise impact that these, these sorts of operations will have will be barriers to, to operations in specific regions and municipalities, but also at a national scale. For the truck and drone cooperative model specifically, 
drones will have to land and take off in and amongst residential areas and, and public spaces. And so maybe the, the, the noise impact or, or many of the other negative externalities of such a technology will have a larger bearing on the people around them um, because of how integrated it is into, into the city. So that's sort of the first dimension. And then the second dimension is what are the challenges we're facing in researching this technology? So these technologies, are, I think, are very well studied in literature from a routing perspective um, and from an optimization perspective. But having to, to integrate the two dimensions of the, our analyses, the, the qualitative socioeconomic regulatory perspective with the, the, the quantitative dimension is, is actually quite hard. And that's something that we are thinking of, of doing as we go forward, because this is what we really care about is how does this technology fit into the world and and what will the system look like in the future um, in its entirety, not just in a, in, a closed, uh, in a closed solution? And so integrating these two, these two dimensions is not easy and poses a large challenge for us because it's hard to quantitatively model some of the softer um, impacts that we're trying to, to, trying to uh, understand. For instance, if we think about privacy, um, how should we route a drone to minimize the privacy risk or the risk of privacy breaches? Um, and how do we quantify that risk? And so these are the sorts of challenges I think we're going to be facing going forward. And I think this is not unique to research. I think it's unique to, to, to all the stakeholders involved. These technologies are so uh, interdisciplinary and, and complex that these questions will need to be asked and, and we'll need to have answers. What are you digging into right now with this, with this piece? What we're currently digging into or currently trying to decipher is what are the key social uh, regulatory barriers we can really get our hands into and which ones are, are worth modeling um, on a quantitative level? This sort of analysis will hope, hopefully inform some of the quantitative models we, we begin to develop as we move forward. Aside from that, this working paper also uh, attempts to devise a suggested regulatory framework for these sorts of technologies. Um, and we try to use a planned adaptive regulatory framework which is common to most emerging technologies that we see today. And so this working paper sort of has two dimensions to it. One is the, the, the implications of the technology. And the second is what can we do to mitigate these, these implications from a regulatory perspective? And hopefully these two analyses will help us inform some of the modeling that we do later on. That's excellent. Great. And so then what keeps you up at night? Like when you're working on a big long-term project like this, I I find that, something bugs you, something eats at you. Is there anything here in this that is bothering you? I think something that, that keeps me up at night with drone delivery are, are just the, 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 variety of, uh, the variety of implications that it does have for cities. And, and I think the different implications it'll have for different cities and different people around the world. Um, no city is the same. They all have their different challenges and, and unique landscape. And of course, culture and people that are, that are actually living there. And so Whilst we can, from an academic perspective, we can say these are what we think the major concerns will be going forward, I think it'll be hard to, to really comprehensively grasp all the different uh, dimensions of, of such a technology as it gets deployed in different places around the world. What keeps me up at night is if and when we, we decide to sort of integrate this into a quantitative model, I hope we don't miss anything is really what I'm hoping for and that we, we are able to build a, a system and a, and a model that is as representative of what we expect to see in the future as possible. Where, where, do you see, where do you see this headed? This research has really opened our eyes to the ability of, of our lab. It's unique in the sense that we have a, a long history of quantitative modeling, but we have this passion for, for the broader implications. We see this sort of research being more integrated into our future work. People might find it interesting that we we really think and believe that drone delivery is very feasible, cost-effective, economically, socially, environmentally sustainable in less densely populated areas. And so whether that be suburban or rural, um, and we think that from both dimensions, it all makes sense because on the social dimension, we see a lot of those barriers I mentioned earlier are being alleviated. And on the, on the, the quantitative modeling and, and economics, side of things, we see cost benefits being extracted there. So at least in the short term, I envision this sort of research informing some of the decisions that logistics firms and partners in that space are willing to make about where should they deploy their drone technology. And I think in the long term, 
I see this technology, uh, this sort of research being applied and applicable beyond last mile logistics. I think it's, um, it's pivotal for research in, in supply chain more broadly to, to really understand the, the technology policy and the social implications of, of the technologies we're trying to implement. And so we have a lot of people associated with the MIT Center for Transportation Logistics who are in industry. They don't really get a chance to take a deep dive the way you're doing. Do you have any recommendations or ideas that you can give people who are trying to get some answers outside of academics? Yeah, I think that if I were to recommend something to try and understand or, or ask some questions about these sorts of um, last mile logistics or, or broader um, supply chain questions. I think what was very valuable to us was being able to, to reach out to people and incorporate some of their ideas. And this is sort of beyond uh, MIT. I think we, we reached out to a number of our logistics partners, uh, industry partners, and to try and understand what, what, how they see it and what their perspectives are. We gained a lot from working with the political science department at MIT. And I think that it was valuable for us to keep an open mind about who we approached, about what type of ideas we assimilated because oftentimes I found the most valuable insights were, were from those who are almost not even tangentially related to our work. That was sort of a key finding I found and it's something I'll work on going forward is, is keeping an open mind with the questions I ask, the approach that I take, um, the outcome I'm hoping to, to arrive at, and I guess the, the ideas and experiences I try and assimilate um, with my own. For, for our industry partners and, and people in industry hoping to, to explore this sort of problem further, I would suggest uh, reach out to, to CTL, of course, but also be open to, to assimilating different learnings and different um, ideas from different fields. Because although not unique to last mile logistics, these technologies are, are incredibly interdisciplinary nowadays. And it's not unique to, to one field of study as we, as we know it. And so being able to, to, to assimilate different concepts from different fields is, is going to be a very valuable skill to have going forward, especially in, in answering these sorts of complex questions. What's your approach going to be? You've got all this quantitative stuff you want to do, and then you have all this soft, personal hmm. behavior you want to measure. What orientation will you take next? I think we need to explore the field a little bit more because beyond in last mile logistics we haven't really seen this being modeled per se i mean the last mile literature is is deep in 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 the optimization um, and operations research sort of field but we don't have too much of the social and broader implications so i think being able to to assimilate some of the learnings from different fields we can attempt to try and model these and we see what the implications or what the results are and we try and understand do these make sense to us on an intuitive level and let's try them out in, in, in different use cases. And, and the, more we, the more we train our model and the more we develop our, our thinking, I think the closer we'll get to being able to model these qualitative uh, factors. But as I said earlier, there, there's no right answer. And so that's what's, I think, very different to, to all the work we've been doing in the past is until now, there's always been a number or a right answer that we land on. Absolutely. I like, the, I like questions with no right answers. They're, they're the real life questions for a working paper. Are you looking for feedback? Are you looking for people to say, yeah, but what about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a very good point. We, we want, we want to know feedback. We want to hear feedback from, from people in the last mile logistics space, but also beyond it, because I think um, to be frank, that was one of the most, I guess, pivotal dimensions of this paper was our, our ability to reach out to other people at MIT and other, other researchers and, and industry partners that we have that are, are passionate about drone delivery, but not necessarily involved in that space. And so feedback about some of the implications that we could be missing and potentially some of the solutions that we propose, I think will be valuable for, for our research going forward and also just for, for others who are, are exploring this and others who are hoping to implement this going forward. This is part of uh, the exercise of writing a working paper and we, we very much look forward to hearing um, hearing feedback. I, I want to thank you a bunch. Thank you for taking the time to talk about the paper. And it's fascinating, I think, where you're headed. Thank you very much, Arthur. Speak soon. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening. 
I hope you enjoyed this edition of MIT Supply Chain Frontiers. My name is Arthur Grau, Communications Officer for the Center. I invite you to visit anytime at ctl.mit.edu or search for MIT Supply Chain Frontiers on your favorite listening platform. Until next time. 